Hello, everybody. How are you? I hope you're doing well this Friday lunchtime. My name's Carl. Welcome to this TEFL org um, Q&A session about teaching online and teaching abroad. Um, it's good to have you here this Friday. Please say hello in the chat so I know that you're there. I can see some questions already coming in. Hello, Nina. Hello, Ali. Is it Ali? A-L-E. I think I'm going to go with Ali. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to get to those questions in a minute. Um, so basically, this is just over to you this session. Usually we have a bit of a theme to the sessions, but this is just a bit more general. So if you're thinking about getting into teaching English online, or if you're thinking about teaching English abroad and you have some questions about it, how do I go about it? What do I do? I'm here to try and help you to do that, okay? I've been teaching a good number of years in East Asia, in a bit of Central Asia, a bit of South Asia, a bit of Europe, um, taught in Africa, South Africa for a bit. Um, so I have been teaching a bit around the world. If you've got any country specific questions, I'll try my best to answer them or I will try and make up something that I think is plausible, which you could then go and find more information about anything like that. Um, if you've I also have a, my own little online teaching business. So if you've got any questions about getting yourself into online teaching, put them in the chat and then we'll just go from there. OK, good. So look, I can see the hellos. Please let me know where you are. Is it sunnier than Belfast? Because I tell you at the moment, Northern Ireland is wet and it is windy and it is not very nice. Um, hi, Yulia, Elvia, Michael, Nicola, Emmanuel, AJ, Nina, Sean, Andrea. Hello, hello, Kim, Anna, Sandrine, Ian, Paul. I can see everybody um, there. OK, any questions, type them in. You can't speak to me um, through the uh through the live voice chats, okay? Just put them in the questions. I promise I'll get to them in the next hour. So Nina, hello. Uh, you have a 120 hour online TEFL certificate, but not a degree. How can I start teaching online? Nina, lovely question to start us off with. A position that many people find themselves in when they're starting teaching English as a foreign language, okay? Lots of people start this without a degree, and there is work abroad without a degree, and there is also work online without a degree. Now, you will see jobs that are advertised for people with degrees, okay? Unfortunately, that is a, a, a way of the world. A lot of that has to do with the visa situation in the country. So some countries expect people to have degrees in order to work for them, but also um, some companies don't have that, okay? For example, if you're teaching English online to a school in China, if you were to go to China, you need to have a degree. But if you're teaching online, it's a little bit blurred. Some schools will try and get through that without um, uh, without having a degree, but some won't. You will see that. OK, so Nina, you've got your certificate. Well done. First thing you've got to do is start looking for jobs, basically. So, for example, on our website, we've got a, a TEFL org TEFL jobs section. I'm just going to see if I can quickly share this screen here. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see it. So this is our web page, our TEFL org website. And you can see at the top here, there's a section here about TEFL jobs. Click on that. Gives you more information about jobs. Um, also, you know, you can, you can see all, online all this thing. You can click on this box here about degree requirements, university degree not required or university degree required. You can click on that. It will um, load up my slow internet probably. And you'll see some jobs where uh, you'll see some jobs where they are worldwide in different locations, but you'll also see some online jobs as well. OK, so that's what I would recommend you do. Go on to our website there and see what you can find. OK, if you also click on the blog page, you can type into the blog page. Um, a teaching, I think, without a degree. Uh, and I think there that will give you some information. There you go. Um, lots of websites. There you go. Teach English online without a degree. Click on that. Read that. Get some information from there, Nina. Now, 
The other thing you might want to do is start setting yourself up, Nina, as your own business. Because if you're setting up yourself as a business, you're handling all the cash. You're not having to worry about visas. You're getting all that kind of thing coming in. No one cares about your degree then. So I'm sure that's something else we'll come to. If not, I'll try and fill in a bit of time with that as we go along. Okay. Um, Ale, a similar question, I think, now about the teaching. Um, the, okay. Yeah. So you don't have a degree, but you used to be a sub teacher at an international Korean school. So the requirements are a bit stricter for East Asia now. They have tended to go down the route of needing a degree if you want to travel out there. Now, there are ways around this. For example, you can go work in Japan on a working holiday visa without a degree. Um, so that is a way around it that you might go through. OK, um, you don't necessarily need a degree to teach, but you need the degree to get the visa for some countries, if that makes sense. Yeah. So have a look online, go through some of those websites that I just said. Don't just look at our website, although we do list some jobs. Look at lots of different job websites, eslcafe.com, for example, Guardian Jobs. Look on things like Indeed, um, I-N-D-E-E-D. -E -E look for some jobs that are advertised on there and you'll find some quite some jobs there. I'm sure you will for you both, Nina and Ali. Great questions. Then let's skip past all the hellos. Hellos, everybody. How you doing? Mia, hi. Um, you're doing the course at the moment. What is the industry like at the moment in terms of teaching online? I would love to start as soon as possible once I'm qualified. Okay. Once you've got that qualification, Mia, the thing that I would say to you is um, have don't expect to be working full time very quickly teaching English online. Okay. This is something that has this this COVID has affected schools and still affects schools and things change, you know. So um, for example, I was speaking to a friend in China who is who has never had to teach online. Even he's his school has been open the whole time. Belfast Metropolitan College around the corner from me, they've had to teach online right from the start of COVID, basically. So you know, things are different around the world and things change quickly around the world. OK, what I would say to you, Mia, is start applying for jobs. Don't just apply for one job. Look for lots of different jobs. Apply for two or three, maybe get your foot in the door at two or three companies. Get a few hours from one company, a few hours from another company. You'll find the companies that you enjoy. You'll find the companies that have the students that you personally want to teach. If you go onto Facebook, we also have a tefl org group so if you type into facebook t-e-f-l-o-r-g and then look for the group this is a you're viewing this on a page but there's also a group in that there's a discussion group there's also some people that post things in there that can help you with get you up and going there's also facebook groups for and reddit groups r-e-d-d-i-t reddit groups um where people talk about uh teaching online and they post jobs and that kind of thing have a look at that okay hello everyone kim bonjour to you um let's have a look have I, i've just skipped past some questions lovely i can see all the questions coming in i'm going to try my best to catch up uh, michael good question are there any good organizations to connect with here and spain to find i think that's a find tefl work please yeah so Spain is really affected by COVID at the moment and it is quite regional. So Spain's a big, massive country and, you know, it is quite regional in the in the, the places that we've that are there. So, for example, I found out this week that Valencia, which I always recommend as a place to go and teach, is, is really strict on lockdown. So it's not a, it's not the ideal. They're not accepting people at the moment to go teach there, that kind of thing. Spain doesn't really have recruiters to try and recruit people to come to Spain to work. OK, so if you're in the UK, Michael, I'm guessing you're in the, in the UK or Ireland, then, you know, you won't see that many jobs advertised for Spain. Why? Because um, they don't tend to pay things like your flights. Also, you don't need to have visas. They like people to be there on the ground. A Spanish language school wants people that are settled in Spain, aren't going to do a runner, that kind of thing. So one of the best ways I've found of, of getting work is to email the schools directly for the cities you want to work in. Every town and every city in Spain has a language school. It's a big part of, of uh, the education system in Spain. So if you want to go work in Madrid, 
Google language schools in Madrid, send out your CV, email them, say if you're recruiting, that kind of thing. Spain takes a bit of legwork, okay? And it tends to go from city, which city you want to work in and just go from that, okay? Good. Chloe, hello. Uh, do you adapt the materials given to you, especially specifically for online teaching? Okay, adapting them is 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 an interesting way, right? So there's two, there's sort of different ways of saying you adapt them. So you could adapt them for level, or you could adapt them for task type. So you might, like, for example, if you're given a text in a classroom, you might cut it up and put it around the room, get yourself sort of a bit more, um, you know, interactive, that kind of thing. And so, so that's a one way of adapting it. Or you might go through and take out some of the more difficult vocabulary if you want to adapt it lower. So that's one way of adapting it. Now, if you're adapting it to go online, I tend to find that you, the way you need to adapt it moan, mace, mostly, my English just failed me then, mostly is to um, copy and paste it into doc, into like shared documents or into the software that you're using, for example, onto the whiteboards or um, onto the screen share, whatever it is to, that you, you feel like you need to do it. I don't think you need to specifically adapt the way you, the the actual materials as in the types of question, but it's sort of how you deliver it to make it uh, work for the software that you're doing, okay? So that's what I, I think I you mean by adapt, Chloe. Please ask me another question if you're not sure. Um, okay, Ian, you're looking for some part-time work, are you? I, th I think that's gonna be a question, did it just cut off? Um, yeah, so part-time work is quite a good way of getting into it. Quite a lot of online schools around the world will start you off with small hours, online hours. So, you know, and then and then you just basically accept as many as you want to do, basically. Um, if you want to sort yourself out, then yeah, you can work whatever hours you want to. And a niche is important. A niche is a part of English. So when you're building up your own online English website, don't say you're Carl the English teacher, say you're Carl the pronunciation teacher, something like that, or you're Carl the business English teacher. Why is that good? Because that helps you with your marketing. It also helps you with Google searches because students tend to put into Google things like, I want to improve my speaking, I want to improve my reading, I want to improve my business English presentations helps them find you more easily. They don't tend to put into Google, improve my English, okay? Martin, I'm glad it's da dreadful down in Kerry as well. That's good. Um, AJ, hello. You're currently part way through your TEFL course, looking at getting into online teaching alongside your current teaching job. Where's the best place to start? Well, the best place to start is to find a, the companies that are recruiting. So companies are looking for people still even after a year of all this craziness you know companies are still looking for people i still see jobs being advertised jobs advertised for people so look on the job boards first of all your first starting point is who is recruiting look on the job boards go from that see if you can find ones that match your profile match what you want to do apply that is the best place to start they will give you materials they will let you use their system OK, so they quite often use their own web browser system. Some do make you use Skype or Zoom, but quite often a few of them say, right, log into our web browser and use our system to do it. So there's all that kind of thing is sorted for you. They'll sort out all your pay, all that kind of thing. All right. So that's the best place to start is to is to find jobs. OK, good. Uh, Marie Claire. Hello. How does holidays work when working? At What's a holiday? I forgot. I forgot what a holiday is. It's a holiday. Some is that where people have fun or something? I can't remember. That was something that ha used to happen a long time ago, I think. Um, uh, right. So if you're working online, tend to you can. Right. So you can book off holidays. So if you're going to go work for someone, you can. They, they sort of do it in two different ways, really. So they either do it by terms. So you know when your holidays are going to be like a school teacher in a school in the UK or Australia or, where, or anywhere around the world. They know that at Easter they're going to have two weeks off. They know in the summer they're going to have six weeks off. So that is one way of doing it. OK, um, the other way that they do holidays is you just tell them that you can't work that two weeks. You probably won't get any holiday pay. That's something that some schools do, but you probably won't get any holiday pay. Um, and then you just know that you're not going to get any money coming in that week. They would then give the classes to someone else. 
okay or a cover teacher or something like that okay that's how the holidays i hope that answers your question okay uh snowstorm in ontario wow uh danny hello you want to start the course how many hours do i need to complete to gain the qualification to teach right danny so we say that our courses take 120 hours and when you're looking for jobs you will see some jobs that sp specify that you need to have 120 hour um teaching qualification that the company that's recruiting you has expected you to have been in the um classroom virtual classroom for 120 hours however people will learn at different pace okay and also people have different sort of the different stages in their life or have different situations where they can devote more time so if you're dipping in and out of it two hours at a time might take longer than someone that can sort of devote five six seven hours a day to it so some people go quickly some people go longer and we know that our, our course is built around that okay we don't expect people to to do exactly 120 hours okay but we say that the you know the 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 time you should expect for it to take is 120 hours danny does that answer your question i hope so um uh emmanuel hello just inquiring about tips for online teaching with more than one person okay that's interesting so two is a nice number i i find it much easier to talk to two students once you start going more than that three four can be a bit difficult the, the key thing you've got to get used to if you're going to do bigger groups three let's say four more than four okay is breakout rooms online okay hopefully the software that you're using allows you to do breakout rooms what's a breakout room it's where you put two people off so you push you select where a room on one of the settings you push a button and then they disappear off your screen and then they go and they go into a separate sort of zoom room where they can talk to each other and then you as the administrator the teacher can jump into the rooms and jump between the rooms and check they're all doing the work so you set a task you say right i'm now going to put you into a breakout room boom off you go and um you are uh, they're gone from your screen they're doing their work then you bring them back that's it. so get yourself really really good about that the other thing is uh, on how to use that the other thing you've got to be a bit aware of is your teacher talking time it's very easy on zoom skype that kind of thing teams whatever it is you're using to talk a lot as a teacher you have to let the students speak and online with the talking over each other and that kind of thing one of the ways i get to do it is put your hands up if you want to speak nominate people make sure everyone's speaking and you're shut up try and get one person at a time talking all that kind of thing okay hope that helps you there Emmanuel. good luck with that uh marvelin hello oh jibai um right i've got to tell you and i'm really sorry i hate jibai so it's not it's i went there on holiday and I, I really didn't like the place so it's not a place that i look out for that much okay um Right, advice on find on jobs in Dubai. Well, Dubai is quite open at the moment, so I think it's quite, it's one of the places where you could um, get quite probably get a bit more work. So, um, two things. I mean, look for them advertising. You don't see that many jobs that are advertised for Dubai. A lot of the jobs come from um, a, a sort of high schools and seniors, uh, uh, primary schools, that kind of thing. They used to have. And I don't know if they still do. The the United Arab Emirates used to have some sort of some sort of a bit like the jet scheme in Japan, where you apply to that. I've forgotten what it's called, Alan. If you know the answer, please put it in the chat. Where um, you apply to that scheme, and then they place you somewhere in the Emirates, not necessarily Dubai, somewhere in the Emirates. That's kind of thing. Um, I do see a lot more jobs advertising Sharjah than I do in Dubai. Okay, that's something I would just remembered and I thought of. But I would probably start googling language schools and see if you can get jobs there yourself okay try and work out the job yourself apply directly to them uh emmanuel yes they are recorded you'll be able to watch this again and from the previous weeks any ones you've done because there's been so many amazing videos over the last weeks that i've done from this spare bedroom of mine uh sandrine hello um no that's very polite of you to start that thank you sandrine is it difficult to find work as a TEFL teaching online for people aged 50 and over? Even with a level five. By the way, I live in the Netherlands and the weather is terrible right now. Okay. I think most of Europe is pretty bad, I think, at the moment. Um, right. Uh, no, 
I, I think teaching online is not a problem at, at that age for sure. Teaching abroad when you get to your um, golden years. Is that a good phrase? I don't know if that's a good phrase. I'm, I apologize if it wasn't. Um, can be difficult because it's hard to get a visa. Uh, Europe, it tends to be easier than Asia for that kind of thing. Um, I don't think I really see that many upper age limits for jobs teaching online. What I would do, Sandrine, is I'd start applying if I was you, especially if you've got your level five, they'll love you. Um, start applying and also set up your own website. And, you know, you'll find, you'll be quite surprised how people prefer an older teacher to a younger one. OK, so, for example, a lot of parents prefer their kids to have an older teacher than a younger one. OK, so, you know, I think that you, you know, sort of get your picture out there, get yourself chatting in the Facebook groups, try and find your own students, just see about that kind of thing. OK, uh, Tim, hello. Um, how do I get how do you get comfortable uh, correcting students online? Right. The, it's get, correcting students is. A difficult thing to do well but it's a key key part of teaching English okay the first thing you've got to think about is that they are paying you to correct them okay that's generally they want to generally be corrected okay what you need to do if it's speaking corrections then the first thing to do is what I like to do is have a word document and while they're talking I'm like oh yeah I'm typing down here oh that's good okay I let them talk, even I've heard loads of errors, and then I'll put the errors up on the screen. I'll share my screen, my Word document, and I'll say, okay, um, uh, Oscar, Oscar, I don't know where Oscar came from. Oscar, you said this. Could you try and correct it yourself, please? Oh, Mr. Carl, I should have said yesterday I ate a pizza instead of yesterday. Yes, well done, Oscar. Good job. Da -da 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 -da. So, Try and correct them at the end of their utterance, okay, or at the end of a task. If you've got a group, put up loads of the mistakes that you've heard from everybody. And, you know, four or five is enough. When I say loads, four or five is enough. Then get them to work in pairs to correct it. And then they can type it into the Word document or they can use the shared Word, doc, or they can use the shared whiteboard, whatever it is you want to do. If it's writing, quite often you can, you can go in and um, I get them to write into a shared document. And then I can sort of highlight the errors, that kind of thing as they type, whatever it might be. Or uh, if it's uh, homework that they've sent you, I like to do a video recording of their um, text. So they, they send the writing in on a picture or they scan it, whatever. You do a video where you highlight it and then you do that kind of thing. I hope that helps. Tim. Um, Marvelin, hello. Any advice on how to set up a business to teach English online? You're based in the UK. Right. Um, First thing is it's going to take a while to get yourself going. My one took about two or three years till I was sort of working full time from it or could work full time from it. I then got a little bit bored of it, to be honest. And then I started doing other things. I miss my old other roles of teaching. I do quite a few different things in teaching. So it's something that you can do, and it, but it does take time. That's why I recommend you work for someone whilst also setting yourself up as well. OK, Um what you need to do is uh, find a niche. So Marvelin, I don't know, you know, you might be Marvelin, the lower level English teacher. You might be Marvelin, the TOEFL teacher. You might be Marvelin, the academic English teacher. I don't know. Find a niche, find something that you like doing, then start building a website. As you're building a website, start building up your Facebook group, get yourself your social media, all that kind of thing going and just see what you can do from that. It takes time. Get posting. Marketing is the key. Marketing is actually the difficult part of it, I would say. So, you know, brush up on your marketing, how to do it. OK, but don't think you're going to be up and running with your own teaching business quickly. Do it alongside other things. OK, uh, Samuel. Hello. Are there any materials or lesson plans you can recommend to get me started with teaching online? OK, so the best materials or um, lesson plans are the ones that suit your teachers. Sorry, to suit your students, whatever their needs are and whatever their goals are. That's the first thing. Now, I still use my textbooks over there, okay? And I adapt them and I take photos, I copy and paste it, I type it in, I make it, all that kind of thing. I use the materials that are trusted. I also use materials that I find on the website and I make up my own lessons. And the key thing is about if you have your own niche, you don't need to have a wide range of lessons because the narrower your niche is, 
the less lesson plans that you need and then you can just sort of you have a bank of them that you print off to yourself or you send via um the website that kind of thing and just go like that all right um so there's not really any sort of special online materials okay what you kind of need to do is find normal materials and then adapt them to teach online that's how i do it myself um jl hello just gonna have a little drink there um you got a TEFL certificate from two years ago. Um, will that be looked at negatively? I, d I mean, look, it's not ideal, JL. Why not do, if you can, why not try and do something like an add-on <clears throat> uh, module that would um, show them that you're still sort of willing? So something like the Young Learners module or the, even now the Teaching English Online module that we offer or the Practicum course, you know, get yourself on that to show that you're, you're sort of up to date with how it is. Um, you might want to start thinking about um, getting some volunteer jobs in. Uh, there's RefuNet is a good one, but they're quite full up, I think, at the moment. But I did find there was somebody else posting one in the Facebook group this week, the Tefl Org group, and I've totally forgotten about it. Alan, I don't know if you know what it was, but um, get onto our Facebook group and see if you can find it in there. I don't think they'll see negative about it, but you might have a little bit of pushback. So you need to sort of show that you're willing now. OK. Um, uh, Ali, good. Uh, Ali Mitchell, hello. Thanks so much for this live stream. You started freelance teaching online. Good, I hope it works out for you. Um, students are good at English. That's who I like to go after. I like to go after the students that are good at English. How do you teach someone who speaks excellent English? So a lot of it is improving their accuracy and trying to knock out any errors that they've learned along the way, okay? Um, the key thing is to have a, is to have a goal, OK, if they just like, oh, I just want to learn English, alarm bells ring for me a little bit. You know, are they doing it to pass a certain exam? Are they doing it to get a job interview? That kind of thing. Try and keep it practical. Try and keep it for things that um, uh, that will benefit them in their life. OK, work towards a goal, that kind of thing. And just keep that in mind so that you don't just sort of bumble along. And then that way you can be a lot more um uh, narrow with the marking that you're doing and uh, your lesson plan and all that kind of thing. All right. Good luck with that, Ali. Um, Alex, best tips on setting up your own website? Confusing with hosting pump companies. Uh, good. Right. So, Alex, I don't know your tech levels. Um, I use a, a thing called WordPress. And really with the hosting, go for the ones that are sort of the ones that are known, something like GoDaddy, might not be the, the dirt cheapest out there, but something like that because they're known and they've got technical support and all that kind of thing. And maybe go down WordPress. That's how I have built my websites in the past using WordPress. However, you might find just to get you up and running a bit more quickly, you could use something like Wix, W-I-X. OK, um, something like that would uh, get you up and running a bit more quickly. Um, or if you a bit take the time to learn WordPress, I think long term it will help you. OK, um, Mary Claire. Hello. Do you need a laptop? Right. iPad. Oh, OK. Well, well done on having an iPad. Um, I don't have an iPad. I've got this little Lenovo thing that doesn't work very well. Um, other brands are available and Lenovo's do work quite often. Um, right. Do you use a laptop? Right. Quite often. Yes. They will ask you to have a laptop. Companies will ask you to have a laptop. Um, they, they don't tend to like using tablets, mobile phones, that kind of thing. Um, and they because they'll, they might send you something like an executable program that you've got to do yourself. Saying that, some companies do have their own apps that do work and then they do, you do, you can use them like that. OK, so that might be something that you can do. All right. Uh, I would if you're something that you really want to do long term, I wouldn't even get a laptop. I'd try and get yourself a desktop. And then you can maybe have two screens and then it makes it easier to share the documents or that kind of thing. All right. Um, Nicola, you got a really long question there. Um, I'm just trying to summarize it. In... Right. OK, so you're basically saying that you're having trouble getting noticed. Look, look you can't even see me. Nicola. Look, look at that. Um, you have, I think you're basically saying that you're, you're struggling to get jobs. Is that right? I think from the theme. So, right. First thing you've got to look at is your applications, Nicola. Right. So just like this. Uh, listen, I don't know anything about you, but I can see 
that there's a couple of spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes in your post you've just written. And that might be because you're typing on a phone, might be because you're very, very quick. Companies hate that kind of thing. OK, so get yourself, make sure that you're really, really good and accuracy levels of the um, applications that you're doing. All right. OK, I'm sorry. It's just an easy thing, but just go for it. All right. Um, don't give up if you if you're a non native speaker, it is more difficult because there's this stupid historical fallacy that non native speakers can't be as good as native speakers at teaching, which is just crazy. None of the research says that's true, but unfortunately, companies want that. So just keep going. Just keep going. You'll find someone. OK, Nicola, you will. I taught I've trained people up who are not native speakers of English who work. OK, it is possible. You've just got to keep at it. One thing you might want to do, Nicolo, is start trying to teach people local to wherever you are in the world. So if you're speaking Italian, try and find some local students who might have quite level levels of quite low levels of English. So you can help them with a bit of Italian and a bit of Eng you can help them by speaking Italian with a little bit of English, because that's quite often how you teach very low levels. All right. So that might be something that you want to do. OK, good. I hope that works out. Mia. Uh, teaching in Japan, a possibility, even though you don't have a degree, you're about halfway through your TEFL course. OK, well, uh, yes. So on our blog page, we have I'm just going to see if I can share the screen again. Um, I'm pretty sure if you type into the blog posts, Japan, I think uh, you'll find some inf some information there about there you go. How to teach how to TEFL in Japan without a degree. So it's now changed how to TEFL in Japan without a degree. So I recommend you go to TEFL.org, click on the blog bit up here, type in Japan and you'll find loads of lovely stuff about Japan. Yeah. So um, you can go there on a working holiday visa, which then allows you to not you don't need to have a degree to go there. OK, so that is basically it is possible. Short answer can't tend to stay there as long as people with degrees, if that makes sense. OK, Mia, but once you're there, you might find a company will take you on without a degree. OK, that, that's something like that. Something that that's worth it. Have a look at that web. Have a look at that page. Go for it. Japan's amazing. Um, Ian, I think I answered your question. Hello, Hannah. You're hoping to go abroad to Latin America to teach English after you've graduated in the summer. Um, programs teaching Latin America. Uh, right. I listen. When these might start running again, I, 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 I wish I knew. I don't think the whole world. If I knew, I think I'd be a, a, a billionaire probably. But um, I don't have a, I, any idea. I don't. Re I know it's pretty bad in Mexico, COVID. So I'm not really sure. And I'm guessing the countries around it are equally affected. So listen. I hope it up and running soon. Right. Latin America is one of the more difficult parts to get to. Mexico has quite I see jobs advertised in Mexico. I also see jobs advertised quite often for Guatemala. Competition's quite steep, especially with people who are in America. So if you're an American, quite often they like to go to Mexico, quite like to go to Guatemala. It's kind of like British people like to go to Spain. American people like to go down there. Um, and that is so you, there's quite a lot of competition. I would start emailing the schools in the places you want to go to and see if you can sort yourself out for a job. OK, email them, look up for the big ones, try and find like some historical adverts on Google from before and then email them, see if they're still open. Hannah, it might not be this. I mean, after you've graduated in the summer, you know, I think it's going to be touch and go whether you can get out there for the summer. I'll be honest with you. Sorry, maybe start teaching online first. OK, um, good. Mary, hello, you're 72 and you have a certificate and a diploma in TEFL. Well done. Um, been teaching face to face for 15 years. Um, is it difficult to find students? It's look, finding students is the, is the most difficult part. OK, it means legwork. OK, so you get yourself in your Facebook profile, get yourself up a Facebook page, get yourself up a Facebook group, go for um, start commenting under students posts. You know, if you see someone struggling in like one of the groups, like so there's student groups for TEFL exams. Go in there, see if you can be a bit helpful. They might contact you, they might message you. You might be able to get them that way. 
build up your website as well, Mary, because it's still the number one way of getting students, I find. Um, get yourself an Instagram. Apparently that's a thing. Who knows? And something called TikTok. I'm not really sure what that is. Some sort of clock. And just, you know, get yourself on there. See if you can find students and then just um, go that way. It takes time and you might have to start with your your rate of pay being quite low, but then you get into it. OK. Chloe, uh, multiple students online. How do I make sure they're all progressing well? Um, try and talk to them individually is the is a key part. OK, so, you know, do things like tutorials so you could maybe if after you've had them for a term or something like that, if you have the freedom to do this and I don't know your situation, Chloe, I can't really I know you asked the question before, but I can't remember it. Um, if you if you can speak to them one on one in like a 10 minute tutorial, something like that, organize that. Perfect. That's one way of definitely finding it out. OK, another way is to try and get them to do uh, homework where like, for example, um, there's a website, I think it's called Flipgrid. I've used that before and they can record themselves and you can give feedback and all that kind of thing underneath and try and go that way to um, you. You listen to them a lot and you're giving them more individual feedback that way you can hear them and just go like that. OK, uh, one find one on one time so you can find that out Chloe or just give them a test that's another way of doing it uh, Peter hello do I need to have a work visa to teach English in Spain and you're based in the UK if you've got a my understanding of the Brexit thing at the moment is if you've got a British passport and you want to go teach in Spain you need to have a work visa that's my knowledge but um, you might need to ask Boris Johnson that Peter I'm sorry but I think yeah at the moment you do um, I need to look up that question because I think that's going to be something that's going to keep coming in and keep coming in and keep coming in. OK, I just lost the questions. Oh, wow. Are we, I'm quite far behind. I need to rattle through them. Um, Mary. Hello, Mary Claire. When would I recommend starting getting self-employed? Yep. Yeah, get yourself sh straight after. Find yourself some work with a company, but also at the same time, start building up your website. OK, good. Uh, James. Hello, you're a 52 year old UK based graduate. Uh, respectable hourly rate is a very good question that many people ask me. Um, right. The problem you've got is when you're teaching online is that you are fighting the rest of the world. So you will find that there's teachers in India that are quite would quite happily work for five pound an hour. Do you want to work for five pound an hour, James? I don't know. I don't know you. I don't know your economic situation. You might be more than happy. I personally in the UK can't because I'd get more money working at McDonald's. So it's up to you what you how you want to you pitch it. But you don't want to pitch yourself too high. Get yourself out. But what the respectable hourly rate is the rate that you're happy to work for. Unfortunately, um, there's, you know, the hourly rate has over time been generally falling. So what you need to do is make sure that you're offering quality. OK, make sure you're offering extras. So make sure that you're also including things like the homework, any mark, any marking, that kind of thing. All right. Just going like that. OK, uh, Tom, I don't know if you're calling me good looking good or what. I don't know, but I hope so. Um, oh, I'm really sorry about your name. I'm going to mispronounce it. Kuratolain Mahmoud. Hello. Um, you'd like to teach abroad for four to six months. OK, first of all, I'd say it's difficult to, to, to get a short contract like that. They most schools want you to teach for a year. Um, what websites would I recommend? Right, If you only want to do four to six months, probably the best way of doing it is to contact the schools directly or look on the, the normal ones. TEFL, org, the jobs, ESL cafe, um, you know, Google TEFL jobs in the place you want to go to, whatever it is. Um, Schools tend to not want people to stay for a year. Why? Because they're they're paying quite a bit at the start. They're paying for things like your flights. They're paying for things like your hotels when you start. They don't really want to do that if you're only going to stay there six months. OK, um, good. Uh, Dan, job websites, I just said Tefl Org is the is a good one. Tefl.org. That's our website. There's a job section there. Try ESLcafe.com. The website looks terrible, but it's still probably you know one of the top three websites out there okay uh kim hello uh <laughs> another brexit question kim you're just starting 120 hour course and you live in the south of france all right don't rub it in kim uh what is the situation re brexit the situation re brexit is we're 
still don't really know i think isn't it um i i i don't really know what it is okay um that's that's we stupidly voted out in my opinion other opinions are available anna you are moving back to thailand next year did the tefl qualify to be an english teacher in thailand without a degree um i don't know thailand and degrees i'm really sorry you're gonna have to google that one yourself whether you can work in thailand without a degree alan i don't know if you can answer anna there but i'm really not sure and i would probably i don't want to really say in case i get it wrong um if you message the Facebook page, uh, we'll try our best to find that information out for you. OK, and then give me time to look it up. OK. Um, Pro Professor Le Sarmento. Hello. You're about to finish 120 hour online course. Best places, best ones to apply to work abroad. Um, uh, the best ones. So well, really, where where have you want to go? To work abroad is, is where you feel good okay i don't think it's possible to say that one country is better than another okay you know i've been to many places around the world i love them all i love japan still my favorite but i also had a great time in iraq for example there's lots and lots of places around the world the best places to work are the ones that you feel comfortable um lee hello what's the difference between 168 hour level five online course and 120 hour okay so basically obviously the simple answer is you learn more on the 168 hour course okay um some companies are slowly requiring people to have a level five online course so you will find that some companies are trying to get uh want people with level five courses so if you've got the money and you've got the time and you think this is something you want to do for a while, then definitely go for the level five if you can. OK, Lee, you just cover more. You go into more depth, that kind of thing. That will help you. OK, um, Marie Claire, where do you get your job props for working with? I'm not quite sure what you mean by props. Get your props, your probations. I don't know. Marie Claire, ask the question again. Sorry. Um, uh, oh, wait there, Alan, do you know what the props is? Props 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 are like the things you hold oh i i don't tend to teach that many kids but i know people that just get them from the local pound shop you know like that that's the best way to do really amazon of course get everything on amazon can't you um sandrine is it difficult to find work as a newly qualified t plus 50 i don't think so no i think that some some schools quite often like older people because they tend in theory in theory to not want to go out partying and that much so for example when i used to recruit as a center manager i used to quite like the older people because they're a bit more reliable than the younger people okay um tom hello what do i think of the teaching resources sold by tefl org do they provide good value or would you recommend other online resources now this is a part of the tefl org of Tefalog that I don't have anything to do with. I do teacher training. I do these live webinars. I also do the weekend practicum courses. Um, what I would say to you, Tom, is that everybody I know that works for Tefal Org is very, very experienced and has lots of qualifications in Tefal. So, for example, I have a, have a qualification at like the 120 hour. I also have a CELTA, a DELTA. Um, I have certificates in education management. I have diplomas, masters in English teaching, all this kind of thing. So the people that have written them know their stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go recommending other online resources. There are plenty of free ones out there, though. Tom, do yourself, you know, just have a look. Um, Lee, you've not yet started the course, but wonder if you'll need some kind of word type app. So um, if you haven't got word on your computer, then I think you've got some like notepad and then you can copy and paste it in um, or go use Google. You can use Google, uh, Google Docs, use Google Docs. Yes, use Google Docs and then you can write it in there. Um, just go down that. OK, uh, and just uh, find, uh, uh, you know, just use that. You don't need to necessarily go out and buy word. OK, uh, Daisy, I've answered that. Yes, it is possible to get an online job for native speakers. Where do I find the job boards in those websites that I said? ESL Cafe, Tefl Org, um, Guardian Jobs, that kind of thing. OK, there's there's loads of them. Um, the, we've got links on our website going to the blog things. OK, um, Sophie, uh, the best way to help students teach online, the relevant websites. So if you go onto our website, 
that we've got a section on resources go into that that'll give you lots of information the it's difficult for me to say that sophie because it depends what your students needs and your students wants are what do they exactly want okay uh you know what exactly do they want because different websites cater for different types of need business english academic english whatever it might be okay tom is there work in south america or africa or mostly european asian the most of the work is in asia that's still the biggest market okay uh, South America, quite often you have to be out there before you'll get the work F for visa regulations and also because of um, that's just how the schools operate. So because there's not as much money out there, they're not as willing to pay for flights and that kind of thing. So if you really want to go to South America, you're taking a chance. You know, you've got to take the risk, a calculated risk. You've got to get yourself out there. And even when you're out there, places like Brazil won't take you on be because of the work visa situation. OK, Africa. You see quite a lot of work in Morocco and around that region. You don't see much work in the rest of Africa because their English level is generally pretty good. OK. Um, hello, Paul. You've spent nine years in finance and want to teach English. Uh, and you have a degree in English and classics. And, you know, no, it's not. If you right, if you want to do a PGCE, we'll we'll. Is a big undertaking that's going to get you into international schools around the world, okay? Which generally they do pay more, okay? Um, but if you just want to go and teach English in language schools, maybe universities, that kind of thing, you don't need to do a PGCE, just stick with your degree in your 120 hour TEFL, okay? Good. John, holidays are a myth. I can't believe that was 20 minutes ago I said that. I'm really trying to keep up these questions. Um, Tom, in what area of TEFL is there currently the biggest demand? Online business, English, English pronunciation, in Asia to class of young students. So I, the biggest demand, I think, is probably still young learners. Secondly, it would be uh, tests. OK, so, um, you know, just making sure that you've got, uh, if you're teaching towards the big English tests. OK, Robert, lovely question. I'm, I love, no one's asked me that one ever. Is being an introverted person a negative thing in teaching English? No, not at all, I think. Um, because uh, I know plenty of teachers that sort of either come alive in the classroom because you can put on a different persona that you are different from your normal persona or you are just a lot more calmer in the classroom. I am very out there and a bit crazy in the classroom, but I know people that aren't, okay? Um... Uh, so, you know, definitely doesn't help. And also you've got uh, students that are introverted. They might like being taught by an introverted teacher. OK, uh, good. I'm glad people are starting some work. Brooke, well done. EF English is a good one to try and find some work with. I'm glad that you've got some work, but I don't like how hot and warm it is there. But I'm glad you got some work. Good for you. AJ, uh, on my experience with teaching online it is, is good, is positive, but it took me a while to get going to answer that quickly. OK, and then I just found out because my one Alan, the wonderful guy who runs all, all of this stuff, I just sit here and, you know, talk, um, told me that, yes, you do need a degree to teach in Thailand. Uh, you want to teach in English in Thailand, never taught before. What would be a good starting point? What visa is needed? What would be key things to talk, think about? So try and find the schools. If you're outside Thailand and you want to go to Thailand, the schools will help you with all that visa situation. If they're advertising, they will have had experience of getting people. They will help you with the um, the visa. So, you know, don't worry too much about the visa. They'll all tell you which one to get, that kind of thing. Starting point is to try and find work. OK, so look for schools that are advertising, um, you know, do, do your own bit of research. Look, you know, look google schools that are out there that kind of thing see if you can find some work like that okay just start putting yourself out there and getting in contact with schools okay um lawrence hello you have a degree in international business i'm like teaching asia uh asian business english so japan business english is a big thing china business english is a good thing korea is a business english is a good thing um, although saying that I have taught business English in places like Azerbaijan and in places like Sri Lanka. So I, I think pretty much business English is, is wanted everywhere. OK, um, number one thing that people look for is someone with a with some sort of experience in business. And if they've got that, then you just go like that. OK, um, 
uh sophie yeah watching movies is a good way of improving english but i i think sometimes you can overdo it watching movies i think something like sometimes podcasts are better um uh hello james um i know any additional cost for obtaining the printed copy of the certificate i paying the whole course uh i don't think there's any options with monthly payments is there alan but please correct me if i'm wrong um but no, I think you need to. We've got a big 50% discount on at the moment. OK, uh, yeah, no, there's no monthly payment options. But I think if you go onto our website, we've got 50% off the 120 hour course. OK, there are no additional costs either for the certificate. Is there, Alan? Uh, yeah, the hard copy and the PDFs are included in the course fee. OK, no extra cost needed. OK, good. I'm glad I've given people some confidence. Um, Robert, lovely question. When choosing a TEFL course, what price should I look at? Does price correspond to quality? What? Let's not talk about price, first of all. What you need to look at is accreditation. So make sure that, because that we off, offer TEFL courses that are high, that are accredited by people not connected to us. So we have paid institutions um, to spend, to, to come in and check people like me, check the courses that are doing, check the materials, check everything basically. So what you need to first of all check is are the accreditation people at the bottom of the website that are linked to the company, are they reputable? Okay. And we use ones that you, if you're in the UK, that you will have heard of hopefully. Okay. So just go down that route first. Why is it important to check the accreditation? Number one, because some schools won't take certificates that are not properly accredited. They will check the accreditations themselves. OK, um, second thing is, you know, you're getting quality because someone else has checked the company. That's all I'm going to say really about it, Robert. Check your accreditations. There are cheaper people out there than us. Are they accredited? Going to leave that with you, Robert. Um, Viv. Uh, you started your own online business three months ago. Good. I'm glad. And you've even got yourself a comic emoji. That's the sort of thing that you need to do. Um, your planning the lessons is very time consuming. Yep. So to, to reduce planning time, narrow your niche. So uh, narrow your age range, narrow the levels that you're doing, because the narrower that is, the less lessons you need to have prepared. Don't be afraid to... Um, borrow lessons uh for, that you might find online see if you can buy some lesson that is that is a thing that happens okay you know if you really want to do that kind of thing pay someone to design the lessons for you you know go like that um don't spend more than an hour planning for an hour lesson any more than that you you need to just get a bit more quicker planning lessons get quicker gets quicker i promise you okay um Lee, hello. How easy, hard is it to teach English if you don't know the student's first language at all? Hoping to do some teaching in Poland later this year. Uh, I have never taught anywhere where I speak the language. Vietnam didn't teach the language, uh, didn't speak the language. Japan, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, all that. That's the way you teach. And that's how the 120 hour course will help prepare you for that one. OK, um, good. Uh, good, 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 good. Any questions? WordPress, lovely. Um, John, yes, you can run Windows on Mac. That's beyond my technical capabilities. OK, uh, Sean, you're looking to move to Europe in the near future. Is it naive to think that being a native English speaker will guarantee students? Uh, no, being a good teacher will guarantee you students, whether that makes you native or not. OK, because quite often, um, quite often they uh, they, you know, your reputation is your word. And just because you're native doesn't mean you're necessarily good. OK, good. Uh, glad you're enjoying it. John, thank you for that tip about the computers. Um, Nina, was that a question about the demo lesson? I think it was. Hello. Uh, yes, a lot of application processes request a short video of you giving a demo lesson. Any tips or specific language points? So the activities to cover is to, to give students time to talk. So sort of pretend and what do you think oh wow that was brilliant you know make sure that you're showing the people who are going to watch it that you know that teacher talking time needs to be low student talking time needs to go up language points don't try and cover too many 
stick to a specific vocab or grammar lesson or a skills lesson, whatever it is you're going to be. Don't try and cover too many. OK, stick to the stages like you would a normal lesson. OK, um, Yulia, hello. You want to teach. Yeah, this is a problem. Uh, are you a disadvantage because you speak British English? Uh, lots of the world want American English. I, I see that slowly creeping into the world. Uh, you're not at a disadvantage, but you will find you see jobs advertised where they want American English. You don't really see jobs advertised where they want British English. OK, so just, you know, just but you will see jobs where they don't really care about that. So just just go for it. Do you want to work for a school that only does American English? I wouldn't. Um, Anna, hello. Um, the reason why is because I, I don't I think if you're if you're discriminating against one type of English, then there's so many types of English out there. You know, there's Indian English, there's um, Irish English, there's Australian English. Are we saying that any of them are better than the others? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure we are. Andrea, CV building. Yep. Yeah, think of any sort of job that you've done before that has any sort of customer focus and put that in there. Have you ever trained anyone? Have you ever... Um, public spoken have you ever done any sort of sales anything like that get that on your cv that's what people look for okay um i would still apply for if you if it still i would still apply for jobs that request american english yeah why not uh where do i find tefl student groups uh the usual places where you find people chatting millie facebook uh, reddit um in the comments under youtube videos i guess yeah go down that route um Jazz, what sort of visa do you need? We've got about three more minutes left to teach online whilst in a foreign country. Alan, if you see any new sort of questions that we haven't covered so far, I'll put them up for me and I'll grab them for you. Um, what sort of visa do you need to teach English online whilst in a foreign country? You, so you're in a foreign country teaching English. Is that right, Jazz? Uh, then I think you would only need to have a you you got to check this out yourself because I don't want you to end up in some sort of prison somewhere, okay? But I think you could probably, if the money is not touching your country, so for example, if you're in Thailand, you're teaching online online in to Chinese students, they're sending money to Britain and you're withdrawing it that way, I don't think you would need to have a work visa for Thailand. But I think you would need, you would definitely probably have to have a holiday visa, whatever that might mean, okay? Um, yeah, you don't need, you don't right. The visa situation is difficult. You will see some online schools that might want you to get a visa, but generally on the whole, they don't really want you to have a visa to 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 go teach online. But, you know, but if they do, then there's not much you can do about it. You kind of got to go do it. OK, but I, I, I think most people don't get the visa. OK, to go teach online. Um, uh Thanks, Mandy. Uh, thanks, Alan. Mandy, does it help to get work if you would have a PGCE and have been a teacher? If you already have a PGCE, you might want to go down the route of teaching in international schools if you're going to go abroad. OK, um, because if you're going to go abroad, they, it, they pay better. They have longer holidays. You know, I would love to. I don't have a PGC. I would love to go work in some international schools sometimes for a bit of the extra cash. Um, if you're going to teach online, yeah, I think it would help. And, you know, it's better to have too many qualifications than not enough. OK, good. Um, Michael, contact them and see, contact them. Tefl Org and see if you can do it. Uh, good. I don't think there's any more questions. Right. Lovely that I can see. I'm really sorry if I did not get to your questions. There was loads at the start. I tried my best to catch up as soon as I can. I'm sorry that I could not go into as much detail as I would love to. But listen, the questions were amazing. The questions were fantastic. Thank you. If anyone is still there with me and Alan, thank you very much for sticking with us for the whole hour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, any other questions, please put them into the chat comment underneath. We might be able to pick them up that way or log into Facebook and go into the messenger section of our page. Um, do that and then we'll try and get you we'll try and answer your questions that way okay listen guys thank you very much i've really enjoyed talking to you this friday afternoon um look after yourselves um we'll do another one of these soon so keep an eye on the social media um keep an eye on our, our pages and that kind of thing and you'll find out when the next one is uh thank you very much guys cheers have a